then there are details of the decision which is being challenged and an indication as to Gaza's jurisdiction. It's a very simple form to be filed. Once it is filed, the secretary picks it up and a hearing is called virtually immediately so that within two or three hours the tribunal convenes with the parties and the athletes in particular any representation and the hearing is concluded after which deliberations are ensued between the parties and the <coughs> award is delivered. The result of course is this that all gas and law judges are supposed to have their mobile phones with them all the time and not move more than two hours away from where the arbitrations are going to be held. So they have to be within reach. The process is very, very effective. We had during the course of the games four, only four disputes. There were six of us, so seven panels of three, which meant that each panel uh, decided on two disputes. Where the disputes are being decided, one of the first the most important things the, uh, uh, the tribunal, tribunal looks at is the jurisdiction to hear the dispute <coughs> as well as the admissibility of the dispute, whether there any time passed, for instance, which result in the dispute not being able to be brought. Once that's out, then they can proceed with the actual determination of the dispute. But in determining the dispute, the tribunal cannot interfere with what are called field of play decisions. And that's very sensible. For instance, uh, if there's a football game that is lost by a narrow margin by a penalty goal, for instance, and that penalty ought never to have been awarded, to try and revisit this after the event would be quite, quite chaotic because things have progressed, teams go into their finals and other rounds or or, or if there are league competitions, it becomes more difficult. And it becomes more difficult sometimes to assess a field of play decisions. So field of play decisions are excluded from consideration by the panel. And that's because of, not because of any written law so much as because of Cass's explained jurisprudence over the years when Cass disputes have been heard. In our case, there was an unfortunate case where a wrestler we watched the videos. A wrestler was very obvious, a no-brainer. The better wrestler lost his bout. It was a semi-final bout as well. Of course, there were allegations of politics behind the scene. But as a tribunal, we could not interfere with it, even though it was quite clear from the footage that decisions made could not have been made, and the wrestler ought to have won the bow. Or to have sorry, or to have won the bow, but we couldn't do anything to do to reverse it. Quite apart from that, if any application, any matter is being challenged, then challenges has to be applied quickly. This uh, athlete took a few hours or after, but it did not allow us to make his challenge, and by that time the finals were already being held. So orders he was seeking was to replay the semi-finals and the finals after the gold medals and after the medals have been awarded. That was simply not one. So that, in a sense, it is. we also had another dispute which concerned whether uh, equestrian, uh, in an equestrian sport, a rider should have been allowed to participate in the games. It was, again, very unfairly excluded by his national association. And there was a case to go on, but he brought it too late to the games. And in any case, with the Asian Games, a dispute arising prior to the Games could not be handled by the panel. So that was another flaw. The, there were two other cases. The third, of course, was the our Malaysian Wushu girl uh, was found guilty of doping. Uh, that, of course, is now part of Malaysian history and of great concern to everyone there. So that, in a nutshell, is what ad hoc judges do. It's quite an intense uh, participation. And I'm told sometimes they could be working through the night in order to make the right decision. It could be a question of determining whether an athlete can run in the next stage 
half the game is participating in. So it's a fast, quick process, done extremely quickly, but decisions made in writing. Sometimes the reason can come later, but the decisions are made. Having said that, and um, despite my promise not to say too much, <laughs> perhaps I could also <coughs> pick up what Dr. Will Davidson had said just now, Bill has had experience in three class arbitration as counsel, and they were all documents only arbitration. I've been involved in an arbitration that wasn't documents only. We had five witnesses, two over a day. But the interesting part about that was it was after the KRLC had reached agreement with CAS to have this place as an alternative uh, hearing center. The country in question from which the dispute arose is one of our neighboring countries, the Southeast Asian country. The agreement otherwise said it was not, but we could hear it here. It would have been more sensible to hear it in Malaysia. But one of the parties objected. Then the decision was made to have that in Lausanne, but in Lausanne instead. <coughs> and the reason the party objected was that Kuala Lumpur was close to, close, so close to their home, and the people involved were very politically powerful and important people. And if you have the arbitration in Malaysia, there is no guarantee that the panel will not be subject to undue influence from these powerful uh, uh, Indonesians almost treating them like the haze, you know, which you can't really. 